So it is a little strange that Alpha Investment has not commented at all on the MetaZoo scenario. Uh, as probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest influencer who promoted MetaZoo onto his subscribers, you would think that given all the interesting things, you know, MetaZoo pallets being found in a dumpster, MetaZoo original art for sale, I didn't see Alpha Investment try to buy anything or I've never actually seen him buy anything outside of, you know, the pallets he owns, right? He's not, like, buying a MetaZoo collection and showing it off like he does with Magic the Gathering so often, right? Uh, singles, for instance. Or even sealed product, right? Uh, sometimes he'll show off older Pokemon sealed that he's bought from a subscriber. Uh, that's never how, or even Flesh and Blood, right? But it's very interesting that he's never done than that to MetaZoo. He's only really sold MetaZoo. Now, all these MetaZoo videos, including the screenshot that Nick's Strength in Pokemon has, where Rudy is so excited, so hyped, uh, and you got Mike Waddell, the boy, the boy. Uh, Mike Waddell, uh, he has, has applied to delay the proceedings because technically speaking, he doesn't know what he owns. He doesn't know the assets. He doesn't know the debtors. He doesn't know who he owes money to. He doesn't know where the items that these pallets are or how many of them exist. I mean, for God's sake, I mean, how are you going to run a business if you don't even know basic finances? And it's actually kind of hilarious. Um, you know, Shaw has the password, I, I guess, the QuickBooks, maybe? He got password to the financial books, the books. And the guy won't give it up. Like, you know, you think MetaZoo, like... Uh, I mean, it, it just gets worse and worse every time I, I hear something about it because it's just like, how is this, you know, how the F is this real life? Like, it doesn't, it does not make any sense to me how this can be real. That like Shaw, who is, I don't know what his involvement is. It, there's probably no legal involvement. Um, he doesn't own the company. He doesn't, he's not the CEO, CFO of the company. That dude, so you gave your books and the password to like a random dude. And you have no idea what you own, what you don't own, where things are located, who, what vendors you owe money to, where the invoices. Like, I find this astounding that they were, a, Mike was able to run a business this way, even for a short period of time. And that kind of explains why he needed to do bankruptcy because now the, essentially the people in debt the debtors can now make themselves, and there's more and more of them. Nick Strength Pokemon's done a good job, but they've multiplied. They went from, I think, five or six to now 10 or 12, and maybe even more. Next time, every time you refresh, there'll be more and more debtors, but they don't actually know how much they owe the debtors because that would be in the password protected file that Mike has no access to. <laughs> you, know, you cannot make it up. Uh, so if a debtor say, hey, you owe us $100,000, there's no way for Mike to confirm is that too much? Is that too little? You know, what do we actually owe you? And when's the last time we paid you? This stuff is bonkers crazy for many, many reasons. But the primary reason I think I look at this is how, you know, I own a small business. Uh, Nick runs a business of his own that's very successful. Like, how, how is this operational? Like, how do you know what taxes to pay? Like, you know, your vendors... Like, is the idea that you don't have to pay taxes and vendors, so, like, it doesn't concern you, so therefore you don't need to track it? Like, how do you know all of this stuff? Like, if you don't have, like, basic accounting or books in place. Like, and for, first of all, like, this is a, quote, according to Mike Waddell, this is a $50 million revenue a year company. So it's larger than my marketing agency by a multiply, right? A, multi a large multiply is larger than my marketing agency by 10 times. We got a bookkeeper. I ain't giving it to like a random employee or I don't even know what Shaw is to like password. I mean, why would he have the books? It's your company. You own 100% of it. And we don't actually know. Steve Aoki, what does he own? What There's a lot of individuals who are just like, it's a giant question mark as to like what their involvement in this whole thing is. And if they're even involved to this extent, right? 
this stuff is weird. Uh, it's weird for a lot of reasons, but I think primarily for me, it's very strange that they can even operate a business with the, without the books. How do you know like how to pay taxes every quarter or if you have employees, how are you paying their salaries? Like how are you paying anybody? The vendors and so on, like if you don't know who's sending invoices and for what amount. Do you even know? Like does any does, does this company even have tracking of who has purchased the native pre-orders, right? Like it seems like it got really big and they didn't do the basics things, right? And has it even paid taxes? On my other channel, we cover a guy, and it reminds me a lot of this situation financially, um, except he had a bookkeeper that wasn't doing a great job, in my opinion. But, like, how do they know? And, and this is a good question I would have for Mike Waddell. I'd love to sit down with Mike and just ask him some basic, like, but not even, like, about MetaZoo, just basic finance questions, okay? How the hell are you running this company based on the information you have? which is financially very, very little. Like, how is this possible? Like, I cannot imagine myself running a company without access to books, invoicing, uh, tax records, and so on. Like, and why in the world would you give it to somebody else who's not associated with the company at, in any legal manner? And why would that person not give it back to you? It, it's bizarre. And I don't know if there was like a fight for ownership, but legally there wasn't a fight for ownership. Maybe there was a, you know, a, a spoken fight for ownership. But the one guy who's missing in all of this, who is the number one promoter of MetaZoo, the number one seller of MetaZoo, and the guy with uh, 10 plus promos, including promos that he and his family actually drew, is sitting this one out. You know, no, no gloats out. He's not saying, hey, I'm Team Mike, I'm Team Shaw, I'm Team Bankruptcy. Um, his, you know, he's basically sitting this one out, and that's very fascinating to me. And I think why it's so fascinating is coming down to the fact that he still has a million dollars. Again, how realistic is this number? Um, he still has a million dollars. Like, I would be quite concerned what happens in bankruptcy. Right, because maybe he can be sued to get the products back. That's what I would be concerned for. Did Alpha Investments pay for this product that he's now holding? He might be oh, it's obviously paid for the product, right? He also he said he paid for the play mats and the and the cards. I would love to get a hold of the finances. I know it's very difficult and it's uh, been delayed, but I would love to see what the alpha investment deal was that's partially why i'm buying this company i want to see how shady or not shady maybe alpha investment was a upstanding transparent person who doesn't delete his meta zoo videos maybe he's not maybe he's more a little bit more like graham stefan anyway hi guys